going on in what we call the periphery areas of China, Tibet, uh, Xinjiang, which is the area where the Muslim, Uyghur Muslims live, protesting Chinese rule. And this is exactly the scenario that the part, Chinese Communist Party did not want. What they had hoped for was when they held the Olympics, it would show off China's great modernization <coughs> its economic development, its modern buildings, and what has been called to attention to is their, their problems, their internal problems. The one, I find, well, there are many disturbing factors about what's going on now, but one of the ones that really, uh, I find really disturbing is the fact that you see among the Chinese youth a rally around the flag kind of virile form of nationalism in response to the Tibetan protests and the protests in St. John uh, province. And that is truly uh, a disturbing factor. Uh, if you had, for example, it's in the later days of the Soviet Union, it was the youth, the younger generation, as well as the older, but certainly the younger, that played a role in opening up uh, the former Soviet Union. Today you don't see that. Of those 29 intellectuals that signed that petition against the crackdown in Tibet, there was not one that was under 30 years old. So there is a real generational gap here uh, uh, between what we say, I would say the middle age and the younger generation. That there is a kind of defensiveness by this younger generation to support their government in uh, what they're doing. So this is not necessarily a country that's going to make this kind of progress. It's going to move forward, it's going to move backwards. Uh, but nonetheless, there are forces here at work that I think are ultimately going to change uh, China. And certainly, it is the growth of these groups of people that I just mentioned that are going to play uh, a major role. If you've not been to China before, I think you're going to be wowed by the modernization. There's just no question about it. And uh, it is going on in every major city in China. In fact, you can go to the most remote village, and they are building what they call infrastructure, infrastructure, roads, bridges, schools. There's just no question. And you cannot help but be impressed by, by what's going on. That's, that's one thing. You will find that people are very, very friendly uh, and will want to talk to you. So you will get a positive reception. Uh, but you will also find this virulent form of nationalism. You will find very little sympathy for the Tibetans or for the Uyghurs, um, if you ask about them. Uh, very little understanding of, of, of their problems. Uh, so that I think that you're, you're going to find a very friendly country, a very uh, impressive country when it comes to its modernization. But if you get into a conversation with any of, any of them, especially the younger generation, you will be surprised at how, um, how strong their support is for this present government. And they have thrived. There's no question they have thrived under this present government. You will not find open dissent. You will find dissent if you get into a conversation on one-on-one. -on -one. And that might be the best way to get information. But within a group, it will be very difficult for you to find out anything. So you can't really stop the journalists. They are journalists, and they are, there's some very good journalists in China. But the controls are very, very strong. And it seems to me, you're not going to see changes in Tibet. You're not going to see changes in Xinjiang. You're not going to see changes in the media until you see some kind of political, internal political reform in China. What gives the party its legitimacy is the fact that it's been able to deliver economically. 
You have to realize that before these reforms began, in other words, when Mao Zedong died, 40% of the Chinese population was living under the poverty line. Today, that is less than 10%. And you're dealing with huge numbers here. There's a country of 1 billion, 300 million people. So to be able to make that change is obviously a great accomplishment. And they were able to make it without chaos, like they said happened in the former Soviet Union. And, and so that gives the party its legitimacy. 